Hello and welcome to AWS Summit Online. Welcome to my session, Single Pane of Glass, Unifying the Facets of Observability. Hi, I'm Waldo. I'm a recovering systems and operations engineer, uh, but now I work as a tech evangelist for Datadog. I've been active in the DevOps community for quite some time now, and at this point it wouldn't be untrue to say that I'm more beard than man. I assume that most of you are familiar with Datadog, so I'll keep this brief. Datadog is the premier monitoring and observability platform. We run in the cloud, but you don't have to. While we do have some secret sauce, everything that runs in your environment is open source. We span end to end from your infrastructure and network to your applications and services, all the way to your end users. This enables everyone, operations, development, security, really anyone in the business, to have a shared understanding of your systems and the ability to immediately identify and resolve problems when they arise. For more information on how Datadog can help your team or to sign up for a 14-day free trial, visit datadoghq.com. But what I really wanted to tell you about today is an exciting new startup. A legally distinct startup, I might add. Date a dog. Basically, it's a dating app for puppies. Sometimes you just aren't in a situation where you can have your own dog, but you really want to play with one. This is for you. You can swipe right and set up a play date, or you can swipe left if you're some kind of monster. We're just getting going and we're pre-monetization, but we've got some runway to work with. We've got the app running and some infrastructure in place, but we don't really know how well things are working. And it takes a while to troubleshoot anything uh, to figure out what's broken when things do go wrong. So welcome aboard. We're excited to have you with us. Now, uh, one way that you can hit the ground running is to help us with the observability of our app. We don't have much insight into how things are, are doing at any given time. So maybe start with some basic metrics. Metrics are the first facet of observability that I want to talk about today. They're probably the first type of data you should consider when beginning to gain insight into the status of your services. To make sure that we're all on the same page, a metric is a data type that consists of a name, often part of a cascading namespace, a value, a timestamp, and optionally tags. Like I said, tags are optional, but they are very helpful in, self in sorting and visualizing data later on in your journey. You can make custom tags, but agents will typically give you some defaults to start with. Having historical data and relating it to others allows you to spot trends and patterns. Metrics are less useful in isolation than when used as part of a set. Without context, saying that CPU is running at 50% doesn't tell you much. However, if we have the historical data to say that things normally run at about 5%, but it's now running at 50, now we know that something anomalous is happening. And of course you can and should use metrics in their context to send you alerts. This will help you scrap, catch the known unknowns. That is, things you know you should monitor that may cause problems, but which you don't you know the current state of right now. Suitably impressed, your coworker says, cool, but which are the useful metrics? There are several frameworks for discussing useful metrics. I'm going to talk about the four golden signals framework. The acronym LETS stands for latency, errors, saturation, traffic, and saturation. Using these four signal types, you can determine what the most meaningful metrics that make sense for any given component. Hey, uh, we're having a problem. I'm seeing the error rates are up, but I'm having trouble figuring out what's wrong. Well, this sounds like a job for logs. Logs, the next facet, are quite simply a record of an event. Along with metrics, I consider these to be the two elemental facets that can be that can comprise more advanced monitoring features. Whenever something happens, a log should be generated. Ideally, your logs are not only readable and easy to parse, but also contain lots of detailed information. It's even better if you use a structured format, especially an object format, because it makes it easier to parse and analyze them. Logs are particularly useful when you need to investigate a problem that you haven't been monitoring or where a single data point isn't useful. As a bonus, your aggregated logs help show patterns of types of logs events. 
you can filter these to gain new insights and identify the causes of new problems. So we're getting reports that say our app is slow. The logs are help for some of it, but can we find out which calls are help hurting our performance? Thanks. So uh, especially as I come from the systems and ops engineering world, there's nothing I loathe more than hearing someone complain that it's slow. This kind of problem was frustrating and unsatisfying for everyone involved. The customer wanted me to make things better, but unless the system was at capacity in some one respect or another, it was difficult to get detailed information about our apps. I needed better info. Traces are a more complicated data type that can be thought of of a bundle of timing metrics all associated together. There are many ways to accomplish this, but it's most commonly done with a request ID that is passed along with different requests payload. It's more complicated than this, but I'm keeping it simple on purpose. Getting started usually becomes with an include or import statement, depending on your language of choice. And from there, you begin receiving traces. Depending on your language and framework, that should be enough to get started. What we have here is a basic span showing calls from the main request to some other services and where the time is taken. But there is lots of customization that you can add to get more granular information. And if the flame graph view isn't to your liking, a spanless view is available if you find that to be your preference. Once you have some services instrumented with the agent and APM, you're going to start getting an interactive service map that shows in real time the state of your services and what their interactions look like. Of course, at this stage in our progress, things are pretty simple, but with success comes what we like to call complexity. Now this looks like a mess, but you can sort and filter on service names, environments, data centers, and really anything else that you've tagged. And of course you can pan and zoom to quickly get to the interactions that you care about at the moment. Hey, uh, cool, things look great for me, but it turns out we've become big in Japan and it sounds like things aren't looking so great from there. Maybe you've got some tests like Selenium that make sure that your site looks somewhat like you intend and responds in a given period of time. That's gonna work fine on your machine or in your CI, but how do, look for, how do things look for people outside of your immediate region? Welcome to the next facet of observability, synthetics testing. Synthetics make sure that your site is responsive and works properly from different locations around the world without having to go to the trouble of standing up more instances and related infrastructure across the world from which you would run a test suite. Combining the idea of synthetics and APM, but from the user's perspective, we get what's called real user monitoring or RUM. This facet provides a full stack approach to a user's interaction. You can use this to help diagnose a wide variety of issues that your customers are experiencing. It shows, from the user's perspective, where time is spent as they wait for a request uh, to be responded to. It's great that we're collecting all this data, but how can we highlight the things that we care about most? Whether starting from a built-in dashboard, or starting from scratch, or maybe from a notebook that turned out to be super helpful when you're diagnosing a problem, creating useful and informative dashboards is an art. A fair warning, um, sharing them among your peers and teams can turn competitive to see who can produce the best dashboards. But as much as we love them, you probably have more important things to do than stare at them. So, uh, hey, why didn't you fix that database issue when it happened a bit after 11 last night? I was busy not working. This is where monitors and alerting come into play. You shouldn't be expected to be watching your dashboards 24 seven. Point the machines to it to take care of that for you. Alerts as a facet are pretty straightforward. When a threshold is broken, service isn't available, let me know. Let me know in these ways and tell me what you think is going on, Mr. Machine. Alerting is often conflated with paging. You should, be al uh, you should alert on many things, but be very judicious about when you actually intend to interrupt someone. Alerting versus paging is a huge topic all its own. One of Datadog's founders, Alexi, 
wrote a great article that goes in depth on different alerting levels and how you should call attention to problems. Hey, it's great that we have all these new faces around and we've got a bunch of separate services going, but I'm sick of having a fire drill every time there's a blip. No service is ever going to be 100% available and you probably don't need five nines. If every change has the potential to cause an alarm, people will hesitate to deploy. Yet you probably want more innovation and more deployments, not less. Service level objectives, or SLOs, provide a framework for defining clear targets around application performance, which ultimately helps teams provide a consistent customer experience, balance feature development with platform stability, and improve communication with internal and external users. Your users are probably fine with less availability than you expect. Most of them don't know what five nines means. If it doesn't work, they'll probably reload or come back shortly. This is going to be a discussion that needs to happen with your company's stakeholders. One of the canonical references on SLOs is the SRE book that was published in 2016. There are other resources, but this is a good primer on how to think about the availability that you're promising. In addition to documenting the availability promises that you make, you can publish your statuses. And these kinds of widgets let you know what kinds of work you should be prioritizing. New features or improving reliability? This is a huge topic by itself, so understand that there are resources to help you learn more. Hey, good news. You can tell that we're successful because we're getting hacked. Security is always going to be a problem. Even if you have dedicated security teams, there's going to be information that you're already collecting, but it's getting buried under all of the inf other information that you're collecting. It can be a real challenge to surface that info and then to make sense of it. Is our utilization surge new user interest or is it something new, uh, more nefarious? Having a way to expose just your security related events can be key to make sure that you're not the next tech news story of the day. In our time today, we've covered the different facets of observability, the elemental observability data types, and combining observability elements and filters to solve different problems. Thank you again for joining AWS Summit Online. I offer a huge thanks to our organizers. If we have time, we can open it up for questions. Thank you.